Dueling Dialogues presents His and Hers with Grace Matthews, The Hammer, and Connor Murphy. Welcome to Episode 8 of His and Hers with Grace Matthews in the Caddy Man in the heart of the USA, Springfield, Missouri. Hi, you two. Hi, we're excited to be here, but we're hotter than Hades. Yeah. Our well, air conditioning's broke. Remember last summer? Our air conditioning was broke half the summer. Right. Guess what? Round two. Round two. Wow. Just like, the, just like the virus, we've got the replay or the second part coming through this yeah. summer. <laughs> Deja vu for sure. Part two, the sequel. Exactly. But we are excited to be here, and I can honestly say we're fired up. Good. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Literally <laughs> on fire we are. And this isn't even the hottest day, so um, bear with us as we drip through um, on our headphones and our microphones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're back here for another show about relationships. We're going to talk parenting again. And today we're just going to talk nuts and bolts of parenting. Okay. We're going to see what you guys think, what I think, how that all conjugates, and you know, you know that whole male female deal where Venus and Mars, and you know, we um, think all kinds of different things. But why are we doing the show? Because we suck at relationships. <laughs> we suck. But we still say, 32 years we've been married, we've been together 37 years, and we've had more bad days than good days. Wow. So, um, and we got three great kids that, um, you know, aren't perfect, but you know what? They don't have too many problems. Good. So, um, we're very proud of them, and uh, they're all boys. So, we, you know, that's the weird thing here. We have all boys among us as children, and we all have all girls as grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. So, uh, and um, of course, being a grandparent is way different. Yeah. That being a parent, and it is a whole lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, you get the fun bits, definitely. Exactly. So, we also don't want to forget to say, move that coffee table, dance, work out, do some videos. Leslie Sansone and others, you know, find somebody on YouTube. Get, yeah. You know, get up and get moving. Have you guys done the three shot challenge yet? No, what is that? Um, you line up three different types of booze and you have a shot. You do shots with your spouse. Three shot challenge. So you each have one of the three boozes. I just make a video of it and then nominate somebody else. Oh, wow. We're going to do that this weekend. <laughs> okay. There you go. I, I mean, thanks. We, we, I'm, I'm right now. Any, any reason to drink is a good reason, you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> just don't nominate me because that would just be me drinking one type of booze all by myself. You'd have to do it six times. <laughs> yeah. I have to take six ounces. There you, you go. You might forget to turn off the camera. Yeah, nobody know? wants to see that shit. <laughs> nobody wants no. to see that. No. 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 Okay. I'm serious now. You know, we've got race re racism as um, at an all-time high right now um, in the United States, and I think it's spreading around the world. I mean, a lot of places are protesting, um, you know, in support of right. the George family and, um, you know, Black Lives Matter and, uh, you know, against them, right. you know. How do we talk to our children? I mean... You know, um, I'm going to let the hammer take this first. Or, you know, uh, the hammer, a.k.a. caddy man. We are going to try to move towards caddy man. So. You know, from growing up in Springfield, Missouri, where the black percentage, especially when I was a young man, was 1%. Wow. Um, we had a different outlook on the black community because everybody knew every one of them. We all grew up together. We all played sports together and against each other. Um, we didn't have the bad relationships that have probably gathered steam across the years. Now, the hardest thing it is, is to explain or I think this is, I think, the best way to do it, if there are good people and bad people. 
Dead maps are black, white, brown, green, yellow, whatever. You just have to explain to them that, I'm going to put it bluntly, an asshole's an asshole. <laughs> and hopefully you don't use that word with your child. <laughs> just no. Of course, of course not, honey. You know that. Uh, but you know what I'm. I, you just have to. The best thing is to be honest and tell them that there are good people and bad people in the world, and that the color doesn't matter, and that um, they need to make their own judgments and judge everyone on their face value of a person, not on the color of their skin. And most children now play athletics. And so they're involved with different uh, groups of people. Absolutely. And so they interact with them, usually on That's one of the best things about sports. You you do interact with people outside of your little world. You know, know, on their team and against their team. So I think that that is one of the positives that has happened. And the best video I've seen this week was the two, the black and the white guy sitting out on the curb saying, black, I don't remember. Relax, have a beer. Yeah, yeah. And, relax, and, have uh, a beer. And Brad Paisley, and Brad Paisley sends him a bunch of beer. You know, <laughs> I mean, does that not like really it. just but, characterize you know, it? Really, have a beer with somebody, you know? I, I, I agree with that. Of course, you know, when you're talking about your kids, I mean, I once had somebody come to me and said, I said something to the fact I'm not racist. And they said, well, answer this. If you're, one of your sons wanted to marry a black girl, would you be okay with that? I was like, of course I would. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first of all, I am more concerned about my sons being with a woman that makes them better. All my sons are heterosexual, um, uh, so I didn't want to put that out. It's not that I, you know. Um, why in the world would I care what race they were? Yeah, exactly. Just make my son better, and make, and, and I want my son to make them better. Right. You know, a better person. That's what a relationship would do. And then the person looked at me like I was lying. And of <laughs> course I meant that with all my heart. Yeah, so who's the real racist in that conversation? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that was their point. They were trying to nail racism on me. Right. And a lot of racists will do that. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. But that's how you teach your kids to love all people. Yeah. And, and and the caddy man's right. There are bad people. Stay away from bad people. But I tell you what, there's a lot of bad white people. Yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of bad Christians. There's a lot of bad Jews. There's, you know, <laughs> bad people exist everywhere. You know, I mean, the devil is not a racist. Yeah, he's not. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't pick a particular. He just uh, moves yeah. right in, you know. Yeah. He says the water's fine, baby. You know? Shitty people are everywhere. Exactly, and um, I don't know if you have any thoughts you want to add, Connor, but... No, I pretty much agree with that. I mean, I think everybody knows that racist p person that they've judged as racist in their, their minds. Exactly, um, and I can smell a racist a mile away, and yeah. I, I think I said this in one of our other episodes, but I, I, you know, I want to reiterate it again. You know, spend money on hauling out the bigots and the racists. Right. It's like I said earlier, I think that I could walk in the dealership where Gary Man works and I can tell you if somebody's a racist or not. Well, I, I have one thing to say about that is is that racist or no racist, you have to continue on. Um Absolutely. You know, don't live in the past. You have to move forward. I mean, I, I have a Ukrainian heritage, and the Ukrainian people have been oppressed time after time after time. They um, certainly have. Yet we don't um, call racist to somebody that's against a Ukrainian. Um, an interesting thing happened to me when I was back, when my mom was sick. I was in my hometown, which is largely Ukrainian. Is uh, we took a break from the hospital and went to have a bite to eat in a restaurant, and the, I heard the people behind me say in a conversation, "Well, those Ukrainians just think different," 
<laughs> and that's what we did. We burst out laughing, right? Yeah, they they yeah. didn't know I we mean, heard like, them, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, why take that seriously? Good for your family. Yeah. So you know, you have to continue on. You know, uh, yeah. Remember what happened in the past, but let's make it a better place. Let's not. Um, start fighting about it and uh, rioting and it, that stuff just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, well, exactly. And um, rioting is never, it's okay. Like our thought of the day suggests always challenge the status quo. Yeah. You know, challenge the status quo. Don't burn it down. Right, right. And, and be careful when you follow the masses because the, the M might be silent. Yeah, and the end might be fueled by media. Yeah, yeah true. True, yeah. and they're all asses, so there you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, teach your, your kids to love all people, but be aware of evil. Right. Um, on the same note, we're talking marital relationships and parenting. You know, it is schizophrenic to be a parent. And I said, I'm kind of using schizophrenic wrongly but um you know it's multiple personality you're wearing multiple hats every day and now with, with covid all of a sudden there's the teacher's hat that's been worn oh my you know? gosh yes and um, let me tell you it's very hard for a parent to be a teacher yeah it, for sure. it really is i we like i said before we had a special needs child and let me tell you um that was one place where we didn't scrimp money, and, and I'm a money scrimper, as we would oftentimes get a tutor versus me doing it because things are so emotionally charged between a parent and a child, especially if the, the child has learning difficulties. But right. that is one thing. A parent is, of course, always a teacher. Right. But, you know, we like to stick to things like morality, religion, history, um, you know, we, we don't necessarily want to teach them math and, um, you know, English. That's what Google's for. Exactly. <laughs> but when you are a parent, you are a mom, dad, husband, wife. Right. You've got to remember those roles. Right. That you are also a husband and wife. You have that relationship. You know, you're someone's lover. You're, you're a chef. You're, right. you're a nurse. And you're, you're a provider. Right. And sometimes juggling all those things, we lose them. And nine times out of ten, the ones we lose are those husband and wife roles and those lover roles. Right. And that's kind of what this show is about, is keeping those alive. Okay. You know, sometimes you're just the uh, daily routine of wearing all the different hats wears you out. <laughs> where you can't be lovers or uh, husband and wife at night, you're you're so tired, you're ready to, to hit, rack up the, you know, hit the rack. But you're going, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you know, and and that's a shame. And you really should. And we have, um, of course, we're empty nesters now. Exactly. But we are still trying to allow our ourselves at least 30 minutes of time upstairs yeah we our bedroom is upstairs we're trying to allow ourselves 30 minutes of what we're calling alone time yes right. so we can uh, without even oliver the dog <laughs> yeah not even oliver the dog's making it up there <laughs> and so you know you've got to just and believe me it, there's nights where you both of us are tired, we've had a tough day, blah, 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 this happened, that happened. You can come up with everything in the world that happens during a day in, in everyday life that ruins you or makes your day jam-packed where you don't have time to do anything. But taking 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to get back to your natural positions, um, and believe me, for a long time we did not do it. No, we didn't. And, but... As we have done that here in the past year to yeah. year or so, yeah. we have made it a point to it, it. It's very relaxing. We sleep better. Um, you can hash we out. We decompress. Some 
you know? Yeah. You yeah. never know. So you're allowed to solve some world problems, you know? Yeah, but you are, <laughs> you know, you are, you know, your boyfriend and girlfriend a lot of times. I mean, some people don't even get married. That's okay. We, we talk married, but not all couples are actually married, but... You know, you are lovers, you are boyfriend and girlfriend, you are husband and wife before the kids, and you are after the kids. Don't lose those roles. And when I say after kids, there really isn't any after the kids. When they leave home, I mean, there really, you know, is no after, but at least you've got that alone time. They'll be back. They'll be back. Yeah. They might leave home, but they never go away. That's my favorite motto. That's that's true. So, what about when parents disagree on parenting? Now, I have to say that the Caddy Man and I, we disagree on a lot of things. Rarely have we disagreed on what to do about a child in a certain situation or about how to parent a child. I will tell you that we were very um, progressive and that we never hit one of our children. Right. Uh, our, none of our children were spanked by us. Two of our kids are adopted, so I can't say they weren't spanked by anybody. That's that's probably very inaccurate, but um, we didn't do that. Right. And we agreed upon that. Anything basically that came up about the children, I, I think we agreed. We, but we, what happens when you don't agree? Yeah, you know, that, you, that can be a really trick bag to where one parent tells you one thing the other parent tells you another thing and god knows kids will play one against the other oh yeah that's, no, that's yeah. fact no i've had kids play us against but each we other. tried to our motto was make the kids learn a lesson it might be hard on them now but if they learn a lesson if they you know because life is not easy it does it, it it doesn't get easier as you get older that's right. that's for sure and so they need to experience some hard knocks and some punishments and some uh, knockdowns to where um, things didn't go their way. And if you do something wrong, you've got to pay the price. Right. Uh, we try, and uh, that's the one thing that uh, Grace and I have uh, always we always agree that we need to set an example that, and also we try to be the uh, make the same rule for all three children because they were all different ages we didn't want one say well you let Joe do it yeah. you know we we tried to say you know what we didn't let you, that was our first thing out of our mouth we didn't let your brother do it no. you're not doing it yeah no, our kids are <laughs> eight six years apart so it's very difficult because they were all at different stages of development age right. you know what they could do, you know, when Ian was born, Justin was 12 going on 13. Right. You know, and then you have a baby and you can't really take a baby to a theme park. Yeah. You know, so that you have to get creative. And we'll talk about that a little more, a little later in the show. But also raising children that are adaptable. They understand that everybody doesn't do it the same. Okay. Right. Uh, You know, and the idea is that you raise kids that can grow up, leave home, go away to school, or at least go to school, get married, and, you know, not live with you, even though you cry your eyes out when they go. Right. And a lot of that is is teaching them to problem solve on their own, which means means letting them fail every now and then. Exactly. It means letting them fail, but it also means that. Mom has an influence. Dad has an influence. Don't turn dad into mom. Don't turn mom into dad. In the communications industry, uh, when we had large amounts of employees, we used to call that momming and popping because if the employee didn't hear what he wanted to hear from you, he'd go to another supervisor until and keep doing that until he got what he wanted. So we used to call that momming and popping. Well, that's, that's exactly true. And um, hopefully, unlike... Um, in the workplace where someone's um, using it to their advantage, kids can learn adaptability, Mm -hmm. you know, and problem solving and cause and effect. It's just like going to grandma's. I mean, 
what is more important than going to grandma's and going, she doesn't cook her green beans like mommy does. (laughs) Well, grandma doesn't have to. (laughs) <laughs> right. And you you need to learn that people do things differently. Some people take baths. Some people take showers. It's not a right and wrong. Right. It's some people don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to teach that one. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but um, adaptability. And, and I love the fact that dads often do things poorly. <laughs> That moms do well, and and, and I don't mean they do everything poorly, but, you know, I mean, actually, the caddy man can change a pretty good diaper, but I've seen dads where the diapers are hanging off, you know, and and the kid has a blowout. Right, and, you know, he's probably not going to be the one that's going to sew a button back on. No. Exactly. But I do have a strong stomach. Yeah, yeah. And, I uh, and since I have allergies, I don't breathe well. Well, so <laughs> some of those not. accidents, I could, uh, you know, it didn't take all my breath away. I had some. Yeah, uh, it's really <laughs> nice when you compliment each other. I mean, when so one person is gagging, the other person doesn't bother. That was you know? kind of the rule. It was yeah. you got to take this one. Yeah, yeah. So, but also teaching your kids that. Everybody is different. This is a little bit goes back to the racism. People do and live their lives differently, and right. kids need to be exposed to that. It's just like um, taking your kids to different churches and seeing how different people worship. Right. You, you know. know? Yet also, too, in anybody's class, uh, what I'm talking about, grade class, there are different. Uh, I'm going to say economic incomes of the families. Sure. You need to get along with someone who's less fortunate, someone who's your equal, someone who might be a little bit more fortunate. And then there's always going to be the one uh, percent that are that are up there. But you know, that's just the way the world is and you've got to learn to get along with all of them because they're all different. They're not, just because one, you can't have a, you can't stereotype any of that group. You have to judge them individually. Right. Exactly. So we want real, well-rounded children. Now, on a, on, a, on a kind of a sad note, and this idea uh, came to me based on my dad. My dad was the child of a couple of very unhappy people. My grandparents were unhappy. I never remember my my dad's mom having a happy day in her life. Wow. I mean, I don't remember a happy moment for that, that matter. But her, my grandfather, yeah, yeah, the caddy man is sitting there laughing about Rube. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, we and have we, tons of stories. Yeah, we, we, have tons not, of stories. we don't have time. We, we won't do that. But <laughs> he said, as a small child, he would pray that they would get a divorce. He would beg them to get a divorce. Finally, they did get a divorce, and and he said things were good. They wow. went to live with his grandmother. Okay, and they were actually happy. Huh. Um, and then they remarried. <laughs> wow. So were they still miserable after remarrying? Oh yeah, so yes, because that's that's about the time I came along. So probably. they missed the misery. They liked the misery. I mean, I've always I use often use everybody loves Raymond, <laughs> right? Because I know a lot of Raymonds. Raymond was happily unhappy, right? And if he got too happy, he was uncomfortable because <laughs> right. he might not be thinking or prepared. For the disaster that he knew was going to strike. Right. And so there's there's a lot of Raymonds out there. I have a lot of Raymonds in my family. But there actually could be a time. You know, work on your marriage. Get it right. I'm not saying get a divorce. But when people say, I'm staying together for the children, probably maybe not a good you should idea. assess that idea. Yeah. Is that always the case? Do you have Is any it thoughts? better? Yeah, yes. I, I have, and I'm just going to use my personal um, intervention here that 
I think the when a couple and it's when the, especially when the children are at home when they have left home they're adults that's a different story whatever makes the children the happiest is the best route yes they still need a mother yes they still need a father okay. but that doesn't necessarily mean that the mother and the father have to live in the same house right so um I'm never going to be the one to judge. Uh, I really try not to judge. Uh, I had this happen in my business where I have done business with both the wife. I mean, where the couple has done business with me and then there's a divorce and they both do business with me. I, I know that there's, you know, the, it's always, I always look at it as a 50, 50 deal. Right. And, uh, I just think that whatever is best for the children, if it means, if it's living together, that's great, and maybe you guys working it out. If it's so terrifying that it haunts the children, that's not good either, because then they're going to grow up, and what's the, what's the chances of their relationships? Exactly, and, and I think you do have to think about that. I really do. But... Um, Okay, and let's talk a little bit about strengthening the family bond, especially through activities. We talked about having a, a special needs child in the in the last episode and um, how we couldn't go a lot of places. And we had these kids that were all stretched out in age. You know, at one point we had an 18-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 6-year-old. They, they don't normally do the same thing. So... And, and then the special needs child that could not do a lot of activity. So we would create things to do at home, you right. know, and um, that's great. And you can do a lot of things inexpensively. It's not that expensive to have a basketball goal, for example. Or at one point we had we had some sand brought in and we had sand volleyball. Right. We, we've always had swimming and that kind of thing. Here's the thing, though. I, you know, I met a couple the other day. I had this beautiful pool, and I'm like, wow, that's really nice. And they said, yeah, well, we take care of it, but um, we never get in it. <laughs> get off your butt. Okay, you can do all these things, have all these great ideas, have all these things around your house. And I, I think this with the idea of move the coffee table. Right. Get off your tush, because... Having a great pool, having a basketball girl is, is not that great if you don't get up off your tush and use it. Right. right. Well, I'm going to throw in my two cents here that as being a parent, too, if you're the parent that has the bigger house or you have the swimming pool, you have the basketball goal, and the neighbors or friends are coming to your house, you know what? That means you have control over your kids, too. You know where your kids are. They yeah. can't get in a whole lot of damn trouble yeah. if, if you they're in your that. backyard. Exactly. You know, that, that's a great idea. And uh, that was always where I thought, you know, did we spend more money? Yes. Was it? Did it kind of make us like babysitters sometime? Yes. But you know what? We sure didn't have to worry about a bunch of problems, and we didn't have to worry where our kids were. We didn't have to worry about who they were hanging out with. So, you know, the positives definitely outweighed the negative. Oh, I yeah. totally agree with that. And, and we did raise three children without drug and alcohol problems, but I can tell you we always knew where they were till they went to college. Right. And if you always know where they are and you teach them, then once they go to college, they're going to be okay. Right. Okay, they're going to make the right choices. But what are, you know, activities? Let's, let's throw out some ideas. Um, you know, uh, building a family tree together. That's especially um, a good idea to do with young children. Um, you can make a place on your wall and keep adding to that family tree. You know, cut out a tree trunk. Give everybody a leaf. Give everybody a, a, a branch. What, whatever you want to do. Make it an ongoing activity. Eating meals together. We did a lot of ethnic meals with the kids. And that was one way we used to teach them about cultural differences. 
We used it through food, and, and we had theme nights. Right. Um, play board games. I mean, our kids loved Scrabble. Right. Um, we still love Scrabble. We do. And, um, and you know, I just want to add that Caddy Man is, has never won against Grace and Scrabble. But <laughs> and so Grace that. has never won against the uh, youngest child. On so. zero and, and ten million or yeah, however many yeah. games have been in play. Yeah, um, I feel like the Harlem Globetrotters playing yeah, the but New I York. I never uh, beat you at Trivial Pursuit either. Well, so that's because I'm it's, older. It's sort of <laughs> evens out. Right. Um, volunteer together. You know, go work at a soup kitchen right. as a family. Be crafty. There are all sorts of, okay, go to Connor's YouTube. And, and not his YouTube, but he, he likes to say you can learn to do anything on YouTube. You know, there are tons of, um, here's one, go camping. Not me, but you can. Right. Okay? I like the hotel because <laughs> I like the showers. You know, but get outdoors, hike, you know, um, read your kids' home. story. Um, here's one of our favorite, landscaping. Right. You know, or, our kids to this day love to plant things. Well, rock, rock, rock hounding is a good one too, man. Absolutely. And, and we've been doesn't a little cost bit of anything. Work. Yeah. Yeah. We have there got, are so many things. You we can, have definitely been rock hounding. Yeah. Also. We have been. Well, you guys we have a lot of neat places there, like uh, gemstone quarries and mines and stuff oh, like that. Oh, sure. Yeah, we and sure we are do. the home of limestone. Yeah, we're the home of rock. We're the rock capital. We're like bedrock. You yeah, know? we're we're flintstones. We have a lot of granite here, but uh, we also have a lot of jade in BC. Oh, and cool. I love on, it. The, on the island, uh, Peridot is is really Ooh. nice too, Ooh, like Peridot. gemstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> You got to know where that is, and you got to do some work. I think it's about a two-day hike in. So, oh wow! I don't know if that's for me. You kind of no. got to camp out. No. But no. science experiments you can find online too. You can find it YouTube. There's basketball. There's swimming. There, you know, get creative. Yeah. Um, you know, make jobs. You know, I used to label the jobs like a like the army. Right. I would I would do this is section one o one hundred. <laughs> you know and um that really gets the kids attention right i mom i just got section 0 100 done <laughs> you know you can make it more fun you know i used to assign towels to them every week too right my dad thought it was cruel i said i'm washing towels every day <laughs> so they get an assigned towel, they screw it up, and they're going to drip dry at the end of the week. Yeah, the funny thing was when they would come ask Dad, "Hey, Dad, how do you do section one three four six? Well, son, I'm not really sure, but I bet you can figure it out. Or I would say, "Let's go look, and I bet we can figure it out together," because I didn't have a clue what that was. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, but um, you know, a little programming alert. Next week, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about obsessive compulsive disorder. It's going to be a great show. Please tune in. I also want to say, look for Caddy Man's cooking videos. They're all over the web. Okay. They're on Sanigan Free Press. They're on YouTube. They're on Facebook. Look at them. Everybody loves them. Um, he's got some great cooking shows. Everything's easy. Okay. Everything's so easy. Good. So uh, I want to remind everybody the thought for today, always challenge the status quo. Awesome. Have the confidence to challenge the status quo. Right. And then our affirmation, we are messengers in love, happy, healthy, financially prosperous, great partners and parents. We are charitable, energetic, creative trendsetters that experience success every day. Keep those things good thoughts in mind and have a great week same to you too yeah and i just want to remind everybody to move that damn coffee can <laughs> all right all right see ya thanks for listening everyone bye now